Hi, today we're talking to Marilyn Spina about her career in the Democratic Party. Uh, she's not only served uh, the Democratic Party in various capacities, but she's also done public service for a number of elected office holders. We're going to ask her a little bit about her experience in that area and, and some of the great stories that she might be willing to share with us. Uh, Marilyn, t tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where were you born? Where did you... I'm born in Des Moines, Iowa. I attended uh, high school, St. Joseph Academy. I went to University of Iowa for one year. And then, then I came back here and went to beauty school. Didn't like that. And one day I quit and said, I'm going into politics. And that's a true story. And I went down to the headquarters, and there was a woman there named Catherine McNerney. And that was my introduction. Do you remember what year that was? Oh, about, let me think about it a minute, maybe 64, 63, 64. And I walked in, and her and I was a perfect bait for her because I was unmarried, no children. Time. Oh, yeah. I had the time to give. And I gave it. I mean, I loved it. We had a good time. Lots of fun. Brought Michael in on it, and my friend Vincent, and, and they, they had a lot of fun, too. The first job that you had, was that was that with the Polk County Democrats, or who was? Yeah, Polk County Democratic Party. I worked at the headquarters and for two or three years, off and on, and I worked for them. And then I worked uptown with the state Democratic Party, too, with Catherine. And what was your job at the state party? Yo, whatever they told me to do, honey, dragging those mail sacks at midnight, Mercedes and I, we'd bring them down, to, to, and Joe Kerman, we'd bring them down to the dock at the courthouse. We'd go underneath and we'd put them down there. But heavy, heavy bags of all that stuff. We worked hard and didn't make much money. I think I made a dollar twenty-five an hour, and and gave to the Democrat Party because Catherine indoctrinated you. You had to give to the Democrat Party. From that dollar twenty-five an hour, I gave each week money to the Democrat Party. If five dollars, ten dollars. That's true. We had to do that. All right. With, with regard to uh, to your entrance into politics, was there any event that brought you into politics, or you just always were interested in the Democratic Party? I love John Kennedy. He wasn't dead yet. So. But probably been in 63, 63. before his assassination. Four, but I just thought about that. It was 63. Before his assassination. Before that fall. So Came you... in the spring there. I left the beauty shop said, this is not for me. Trust me, and I left. And so I said, I'm going into politics. That's a true story. I knew nothing about it. Knew nobody in that arena. Knew nothing about anything. Giving, doing, nothing trained under Catherine McNerney, and she was a taskmaster. The way I would describe her is a velvet, is an iron fist in a velvet glove. That's a great description of her. No, you've ever heard of her? Did anybody else mention her besides me? No, nope, you're the first one that I remember. But... Catherine was a big, potent person now, she was. But she was with the state party or Polk County? She was with state. She was behind Lex Hawkins. Uh -huh. He was the man for her. She was connected big time with Lex Hawkins. She ran his headquarters downtown. That's where I worked. I did what they told me. If they told me to mail out 5,000 things, I'd mail them out. You know, that kind of stuff. We did it. So was Catherine kind of the executive director and Lex was the state chair? Yes. She, Catherine was everything. I can tell you she was an iron fist and a velvet glove. I don't know how else to describe her. She was good to me, honestly, financially, and every other way she was. If I was going to go on a trip, she'd come and give me $300 for just out the clear blue sky. She was very good to me. She didn't have any children. So, you know, she just... And John, her, her husband was postmaster, appointed by Neil Smith. They were big Neil Smith people. They, I was too young for Neil Smith, but when he was first put in office, they were the, the driving force behind Neil Smith until he got to his ultimate position. But he started out, in fact, he, according to Floyd Gelati, of course, you don't know about Floyd either, but so, so much, I can't tell you why. Okay, so you worked on a couple of elections, probably 64 and 66. Oh, yeah. Did you eventually take a job working yeah. for an elected official? I went to work for Larry Scalise. He got elected, and then I went to work January down at, the, at that office, the Attorney General's office in the state capitol. And then he lost in a year, in two years, he didn't get reelected. Larry didn't. So I went to work for John Tapscott in the legislature, which was a real trick. Just for the record, Michael yes. Morrow is here right now, providing you with some support. So when you talk about Michael, you're talking to Michael 
in the room, right? Okay. So, um, you worked for Larry Scalise. He was in office from January of 1965 to January of 1967. Mm -hmm. And then you said that you worked for John Tapscock. What was his position in the legislature? He was just a legislator. Senator or representative? Representative. I don't know if he got to senator or not. I don't remember. He was mean. Uh, I let him know. I mean, he knows I know. He was mean to you? Yes, he was. How could anybody In fact, that? all the secretaries felt sorry for me. He just was on me. Oh, he'd follow me, holler at me, everything. Over the thing from the balcony, I'd be down here, and he'd be up there hollering at me to come up there. But he, I like him. Don't misunderstand me. But he was honored. I love John. If he came in, he'd give me a big hug and everything. Oh, yeah. All right. So with regard to John Tavstock, how long was him? How long did I stay there? Until Maloney got elected. Then I went with Maloney. Down to, was it Dancy? I can't remember. You know, you're asking somebody 75 years old all this stuff. I'll figure Not it out. Not 18. I'll help you figure it out. A lot of difference. Okay, so, so Maloney got elected auditor? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, he did, but I'm trying to remember what, if I was with Katie. I went with, okay, I went with Katie Shinstein. That's who I did. The I recorder's went with, office. To the recorder's office. Okay, and then Maloney... There was a vacancy for a good position. I left Katie and went down to Maloney's office, and that's where Floyd Gelati worked. Do you, you know Floyd at all? Does anybody know about Floyd? I know of him, yes. Well, he was so active and so known, and so and he collected a lot of money for those guys over through the years, and he really did. He, he was a very loyal Democrat. i got to say the truth. And he taught me a lot of stuff, told me all kinds of history about everybody. And everything. You're welcome to share that. It's you important. Want. Well, you can't think of all of it off the top of your head, but you know, he just, he was big friends with like Catherine. Catherine was a driving force, even though a lot of people didn't like her. She was a tough cookie. And Lex Hawkins was her man. That's it. He didn't do anything except show up and read the speech, sang the music real nice, and that was it. He wasn't a worker bee or anything like that, or show up at headquarters or slap you on the back or anything. He was. Lex Hawkins, that's who he was. And he was. He would, could get up at those conventions and fire people up, and that's what he did. And yeah. she was behind the scenes all the time with him until she became older and sick, and not sick, but she then finally gave it up, stayed in When Bobby Kennedy ran in 1968, did you help with that campaign? Yes, I did. What did you do for Rode him? Rode on the elevator with him up to the. I loved it, Bobby Kennedy. Whatever you do in a campaign, I don't know what I did. Honest, I can't remember. I just did. I was always involved. If he was going to be at the hotel, and then I'd be down at the hotel, maybe at the desk with somebody, or just in the room with them. Or I get to do all that stuff because I was real connected to Catherine. You know, it depends on who you're, who's guiding you along the way, or who's promoting you to get to do these things. And I got to do them because of her. And then later. Then Jim Maloney came on the scene, which was, he was married to my a friend of mine that had been a friend of mine since we were young, young, young. Sharon's her name. And she, he married Sharon. That's how I got to connected with him. And then she dies. Right. Yeah. She dies. yeah, that was very sad. It was four. Yeah. Uh, do you have any stories about Bobby Kennedy and your meetings with him? Well, he was funny. I remember he always had an eye for girls, and there was this one girl that always would be following us around. She was from the east side, a friend of the Jim Maloney, because I'm not going to say her name, but she wasn't very cute. <laughs> and we were in the elevator, I never forgot it. He, he looked at, I think, it was, I'm trying to remember who the guy was. Was it Maloney? He, anyway, whoever this who was in the elevator with me going up with Bobby Kennedy, he wanted to know, where did that one girl on the end, who brought her in here? Where'd she come from? He was kind of stuck up, I thought, because he noticed how she wasn't very cute. He wanted to know where she came from. True story. Did you ever get into a situation where um, there was a battle between the courthouse Democrats and the, uh, the kind of the Democrats that were yeah. part of the... Yeah, Catherine all the time was fighting with them. Was that over the Vietnam War issue, or what was that? I don't think it was ever over any issue. Who was in charge? Who had the power? Were you for Lex Hawkins? Were you against Lex Hawkins? Were you for Art Hedberg? Were you against Art Hedberg? We were Art Hedberg people. We were Lex Hawkins people. Who else was there? I can't remember the chairman's. Can you? Some of them. Who? But 
Well, I, I don't know. It. I, this is, I'm asking you the question. I know, but I can't remember everything. I'm too old. I'm sorry. It's the truth. Did you ever lose your job over that particular issue where there was a fight between courthouse Democrats and no, uh, courthouse no, no, Democrats? No, I've been employed for years. I worked for Katie, and then I worked for, of course, Maloney for the last 25 years. I went down there from, from Katie because I knew she got married, and I knew she was going to be leaving, da, da, da. So I just went downstairs and went to work down there. But for Jim Maloney, and it's been a good job, nice job. He's a good guy to work for. Yeah, not too hard. Mm -mm. Yeah. He don't bother you. Uh -uh. No. Were, were there any other politicians that you were really loyal to that ran for office like the Kennedys? I love the Kennedys. I'd do anything for the Kennedys. Who else was there? I'm trying to look at the pictures up there to see who I can remember. I was never close to John Culver or in his bailiwick at all. But we were always with Neil Smith on the edge because that was Catherine's man. She nourished him from beginning, Mr. Neil Smith. Good man. Yeah. Harold, Harold Hughes, were you involved with his no, campaign? Not really, well? not really, no. Never in his bailiwick. Not that, that I wasn't for him. I mean, I just never was in his crowd. Ask me some other ones. I can't remember. Were you involved in any other presidential campaigns? All of them. I, I know, but there were lots of different candidates who ran. Usually we only have one nominee. Oh, I gotta, I'd have to think. I can't remember all those people. 72, we have McGovern running. Yeah, we were from McGovern. From the start? Who? Kennedy. That was always my top priority. So you, you, did you support Edward when he ran in 1980? Always support the Kennedys. Yeah. We'd drop anybody to be for Kennedys. Yeah, we would. That's the truth. So you worked hard for him in 1980? Always. Always Kennedy. Was Michael Morrow with you? No, he never was. He made me sick something. <laughs> Say it, do it. In 76, did you uh, work for Carter or for one of the other candidates? There was I think Carter, and... Jim Maloney and Floyd Gelati fell madly in love with Jimmy Carter. I was out of town. I left town and went with Kathy McNerney to Florida to get away from those two nuts because I didn't want to be for him. That's a true story. Floyd and Jim Maloney, they were crazy about Carter. Now, Michael saying, yes, it's true. But then when I came back and then Katie, they, you know, we couldn't be against him. So we were for him, but and he had a party for him at Jim Maloney's house, great big party for, uh, for him, Carter, Jimmy Carter. And I got to introduce him all around. And Catherine really was there with her cigarette. <laughs> she was in the kitchen, mad because it was we were doing with his Carter. Yeah. But, but Sergeant Schreiber was running. You could have supported him. I know. But, well, we did for a minute. We did. <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> for a little bit. Mostly Carter. They were for Carter. Maloney. Uh-huh. So you went with him? Okay. All my life he's pushed me around and under I had to do what he likes. I find that hard to believe, but <laughs> <laughs> I not pushed. That's not the right word. But I've always done what he wanted politically, pretty much. Because you were loyal to him, right? Yeah, I was. Well his wife was my dearest friend, Sharon. Yes. They have beautiful children. And I'm friends with every one of those girls. And I told Melania, the only reason I stick around for you is because of them. Not because of you, because of them. I've got lovely daughters, five daughters. And, she, you know, Sharon was my friend, those were her kids. Anything else that you remember about unusual presidential campaigns? Mondale ran in 1984. Yeah, and Carrie Hart Mondale, supporter. I remember. Yes, we were a supporter of Mondale. I, he was pathetic. He's, I remember where he spoke. <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> That's the truth, poor thing. Mondale. Do you remember Mondale at all? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing for? You, you were a supporter of Mondale. Oh, hell yes. But didn't think it was a strong candidate. Mm -hmm. okay. He wasn't. And he proved it. How about 88? Did you go to the caucus or one of the other candidates? The caucus. Oh, big Jerry Crawford would do caucus. <laughs> yeah, that was the truth. I forgot about that, Jerry Crawford. Yeah, I'm connected, he's connected with Jerry Crawford. So he's on Dukakis, okay. because he was he was from his father-in-law's state. His wife was from Massachusetts. That's the connection Jerry had. And then I got involved with Jerry. We, at one time, were not friends. And then we became friends. He pursued me, wanted to be my friend. I don't know what for. But anyway, we're very good friends to this day. That's true.
Yes, I could call Jerry Crawford tomorrow and say, could you loan me 500 He'd be right there with it, too. He's that kind of guy. I don't do it, but I could. I wouldn't. I'm not that type. I got my own 500 But you know what I mean? He's you, just a good man. You could ask him for the 500 and then give it to the Polk County Democrats. Oh, no. I well, can't do it. It could happen. He should give a lot of money, does he? I, I know you're not going to answer that. He should. He's got money. And he's loyal, pretty loyal Democrat. So was Linda, his wife, her dad, big Democrat in Massachusetts. You know, I should ask him. I don't know if his parents are still living. I used to know them. I'm trying to think up there who I know. No, he's a great Democrat. Jimmy, Jerry, yeah. yeah Jerry is. He is a good man. I mean, he's been tremendous to me. I'm godmother to his son. He's been good to me. So 1992, Bill Clinton ran, but so did Tom Harkin. Did you caucus for Harkin? Mm, I like Tom, but I never was in his baby. Did you caucus for Clinton? Yeah, I like Clinton. But I like Tom, too. I can't say anything. He's a good like man. Him. Yep. He's a Very good man. Good. He's a good man. He's been a good Democrat. You know, held good office, done good. He's done real well. He was a poor boy. Oh, yeah. He was now, the person that was good to Tom Harkin was Catherine McNerney. She bought him his car through high school at Dowling and paid Dowling. I shouldn't be telling that, but that's the truth. He was poor. And his father was old. He was born to an old dad, out in coming. And Catherine knew that because she knew across the street that the Kerbin family, and she knew about this young Tom that didn't have any mother, and so on and so forth. So she kind of took him under her wing. And I think they made, gave him the car and... Uh, Paid that dowling and stuff. In those days, it wasn't that much. I was then, but they were really good to him. That's really the truth. Wonderful. He was lucky. Did you have any contact with any of these presidential candidates that we've talked about? Yeah, but I can't think of which ones. Who I was real connected to. Dukakis, Clinton. Dukakis, we were connected. Clinton, a little bit, not real close in. Maloney, what I. Well, I'm trying to think of who Floyd liked that he got real connected with. Can you remember? Carter. Carter, yeah, that was it. He was a big Carter man, Floyd July. And he kind of told us what to do a lot. You didn't know him? No. You missed out. No, I know of him. He was very him. comical. Michael knew him. He was smart. He wasn't no dumb dumb. You know, when he'd get mad at those guys, tell them right off. Oh, yeah, he would get mean. Even with me. I mean, he, he, he didn't do just what he thought you should do. Look out. It, it was rough duty. I didn't have an easy time. I had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, but it was it was very hard to, to be everywhere you had to be all the time, to be supporting people and being against somebody else, difficult. You know, that, that didn't mean I didn't like them, but I had to be for certain people, for other people, for a gathering. Or Jim Maloney, or Jim Brick. He's another character in my life. Have you interviewed Mr. Brick? No, not yet. I know Jim. Are you going to interview him? Well, we can it'd put be him on interesting. The list. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what he'd have to say. I just talked to him today. We were real connected. Jim Maloney, Jim Brick, and myself, me, very connected with each other. We were close in. And when Brick was chairman, then you know, he became county chairman. Blah 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 blah. A lot of things were wrong. I too much for me to remember you guys. It is hard. No, that's all right. Old as I am. You're, doing, you're doing fine. You think so? Oh, yeah. I don't think I'm very informative. Well, Ask me a question or something. What, what was Fred Gelati's job? Fred Gelati. He, Floyd. Floyd, I'm sorry. He was the first deputy for Jim Maloney, but he'd always worked different jobs at the county. Never was a first deputy until Jim Maloney. We kind of brought him out to run. Floyd wanted to run for, for that job. And Catherine and I both knew that he was an Italian and he wasn't going to win that job. And, and we, we just didn't want him to be running because we'd had to be for him, but we knew he couldn't get elected. An Italian, Michael, could not get elected in those days. And I, Michael knows I'm telling the truth. That was not, not, a, not a product that they wanted. They wanted the Irish Catholics. Trust me. That's what they wanted. Now I'm talking about that McNerney crowd and them. They were Irish Catholic people. And they were for the Irish Catholics. You know, they'd take an, a nominal Democrat, Italian once in a while or some other thing, but 
most of the Irish Catholic, which I understood and respected, and that was fine. You know, I didn't care. So did, did Floyd ever put himself on the ballot and no, try to run for it? He talked about it, but then he never would do it. He didn't have the courage to do it, I don't think, or he knew he couldn't win it. You know, so we got this Jim Maloney and got him to run for the auditor. And that's just what happened. And we went out and worked like fools to get him in, to get him that job. You know, and, that, and he was anxious to get one because he didn't have much of a job. <laughs> he liked getting it. The truth be known, and it's true. He worked for some insurance company making no money at all. And he had two, three kids all starving. He always got seven. And, you know, Sharon was my friend, of course. And so we just, we went and we stayed at that house for K. Marl, that would be Sharon's mother, had the home in the basement, and that's where we were. I can remember Jim Maloney having a party to everybody to meet him, and he served ice cream. Do you remember that? Mel Giofredi, he bring milk, and he bring, he brought him all those big union people a dish of ice cream. I never forgot it. I was so embarrassed because I thought that was a dumb thing to serve. They all came there to endorse him, Jim Maloney's first time out. And they were at his mother-in-law's home, his his wife Sharon's yeah. parents. They had a nice big home. They didn't have much at that time, Sharon and Jim. They were starting out with all those kids and so on and so forth. You know, he got lucky. Who was the first Italian American that, that kind of broke the barrier then and got elected to county office? Do you remember? I think Michael. Am I right? I know Michael ran. Um, Ken. Ned. Ned. Ned Chido. Yeah, Ned Chido. Well, I mean, John Zircone certainly has had a successful run. Right, but he was after that. We've had two great moral and brothers. He, and, he had, yeah, and he had his dad that was a big shot downtown. And he ran against, you ran against who? Me? Oh, Sam Anania, don't start. I forgot that. Sam Anania is married to my first cousin. And those fools over there were out running against Sam and Ania, expected me to be doing something when I couldn't be doing it. Uh -huh. I had to keep my mouth shut, even though I agreed with him. Wait, yeah, Sam. He was on the board of supervisors. How many years? It was comical. I think Michael ran against him. Michael ran. He won the battle and lost the war. That's what happened. He won the battle and lost the war. Michael told us a little bit about that. He, he got the nomination, but then lost to the general. To a, a pretty good candidate. It was very sad. Yeah, it is sad. It is sad. I was sad. Because I was for Michael. Ask me something else. I don't know what else to say. i got a million things I could say, but I won't. Are these secrets? No. No, I, I, there's no secrets anymore because all the people are gone. That There won't have been any secrets. Floyd, no secrets. Catherine and all that group is gone. And Ruth Fiddler, there was another character. Mary Smeed's another character. A lot of them. Vincent and Michael, they were characters. Did you know Did you know Michael before he went to Council Bluffs? Oh, yeah. No. He lived across the street from this friend of mine called Vincent. And he, they're cousins. Okay? Directly across the street, and that's where I met up with him. He'd come over to Vincent's after he got home from his dates, or his whatever he was doing. Then they'd come over to this Vincent's house, right? at 10 and 11 at night, and then we'd all gather there and have a good time. We laughed and had a, good, a lot of laughs, didn't we, Mike? A lot of laughs over the politics. And him and Vincent, mostly him, had been interested in the political arena from then. He liked it, Mike. Uh -huh. And I was thrilled, and I wanted him to do good and go places, and then he went out and ran against my cousin Sam. Oh, dear God. It was just a murder for me. It was tough. That was a tough deal. It really was. Yeah. He wasn't my cousin. He was his cousin. Mike. He was married to my cousin. So well, it, it made it difficult for Michael and me. It was hard. Those are the kinds of things that were hard. They happened to choose a side and be for certain people, and then they'd all hate you, and you'd be accused. Oh, I was accused of a lot of things. I'd have had to stay up 24 hours a day to do them all. You know what I mean? They always wanted to pin it on me that I'd be behind something. When I was home, I, you know, it was just the way it was. Don't you know that about politics? Oh, yeah.
Were you the first member of your family that really got involved in politics? Oh, heavy yes. But my folks were very loyal to me. I had two brothers that were Republicans. Well, what's your favorite memory? Hi there. Oh, I think anything to do with Kennedy's was always my soft spot. I loved John Kennedy. I hated when he was killed like everybody else did. And I, I just, that, I, I liked anybody Kennedy. I, I was a great friend, I have never told you that, with Joe Kennedy. When Joe came to Des Moines to work for his uncle that was running against Jimmy Carter, and I stepped aside from Carter and went to Kennedy and got a lot of people mad at me, like Floyd, Furious, and different ones. And that was real difficult to be for him, believe me. And I stood by, I was for Kennedy, well then, his Joe Kennedy came to town, and he took up with me because I'd drive him all over and entertain him. I entertained him. I'd tell him all about the whoever was whatever, and, the, 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 and so really, we were state friends even after that, and when he was in Washington, and I went there to visit, and he took us, I mean, I was very friendly with Joe Kennedy, a nice young man. You know, he had a hard deal, too with his father and all that happened to that family. We became great friends. Well, you mentioned that you got into politics because of John Kennedy. Yeah. Did you ever see him or meet him? Not really, because he died that fall. Yeah. Only when I saw him on the street in the convertible when he drove by, I'd be in the crowd, you know, that kind of thing. But no, I can't. Bobby, yes, but not John. He died too young. I mean, I had just gotten involved, and there he went. So that was a tragic thing that happened. Any big, any big regrets about politics? Huh, I had a good time. There, look at there. Oh, there's one of my chiefs over there. He used to boss me around, that Clark Rasmussen. <laughs> I knew him well, too, and he knew me. Yeah. I'd like to hear him. Is he going to get over here in this seat? Oh, I'd oh love yeah, to absolutely. Listen. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hear what he's going to say. Do you have any stories you want to tell about Clark? No, I'm not up? anything I could tell. I'd have to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> His daughter's a good friend of mine. His wife's a lovely person. And I like Clark. I do. I get along with him. Don't we love each other? Because you're going to our wedding Saturday night. Yes, is that where I'm going Saturday night? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I am. That's true. Yeah. I've been wondering what I would ever wear to such an affair. To get out my good I'm stuff. Not sure what you wear. Just be there. I'll be there with bells on three o'clock. Marilyn, is there anything else you want to say about? I could say stuff for some hours. What good is it? Clark, tell me something to say. We used to fight around. Well, I guess you're still on camera, but that's it. It was interesting for you to talk about the Carter Kennedy affair. Because prior to that, Art Hedberg and I had been very dear and close friends. And I was old school and thought that we had to support our president. So I was with Carter also. And Lou Fiddler was working for me as a top deputy, deputy in the clerk's office. And she had been Kennedy. And, uh, Art came to me and asked me to release Ruth. Yes. That was the good old days when employees followed the leadership of the elected officials. Mm -hmm. Asked me to release Ruth, and I said, Ruth can do what she wants to do. That was good. And Ruth said, I work for Clark. Clark she said Michael. the right things. She was loyal. She was. Mm -hmm. and after that, Art and I grew apart. We're still friends, but not like we were. And that's been 30 That's a long time. Years ago. I'm real friendly with Art. Oh, you're a great guy. Great guy. Well, I'm friends with his daughter, Catherine, Roman yeah. Thoughts, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I know you want to get rid of me, don't you? No, 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 no. I... Clark and I could say a lot of stuff. Ooh, good one. Lots of stuff. Too bad you don't know it all. All right. Well, Marilyn, thank you very much for the interview. I really appreciate it. I don't think you learned much. No, I learned some stuff. I mean, we learned it about Michael, which uh, stories I didn't know about before. Well, so. I could tell more about Michael.
You don't want to play. I told him about Catherine, which I was okay. Sure. She was my mentor. Yep. She was my mentor, too. One yeah. of my mentors. Yeah. So she I enjoyed now. this tonight, this afternoon. You've been nice to me. Well, thank you for you doing this, Marilyn. Embarrass me. Well, maybe not. Let's hope I didn't. But it's, it's a really pleasure to get to know you. Same, same to you. Okay. You come down and visit us anytime at the courthouse. Okay. We'll let you in. I would love that.